Coming up on Linenwood News. An attempted burglary happened at Ford Elementary School Monday morning. We'll have details on what stopped the crime. Plus, students at CVPA High School returned to academics three weeks after a deadly school shooting. We'll tell you how. And a deadly plane crash at a Dallas air show leaves six people dead. Those stories and more ahead on Linenwood News. Welcome to this edition of Linwood News. I'm Jessica Spivey. And I'm Lucas Bose. A burglary at Ford Elementary School happened during the early morning hours Monday morning. Police were called to the school just after 5 a.m. after a suspect broke glass on a door. The suspect was scared off by the school's security system and it's unclear if anything was stolen. We will have updates on the story as it develops. University City High School is honoring a student after he rescued a child in the historic flooding back in July. Sophomore John Trotter was awarded the JROTC Air Force Silver Valor Medal during the school's Veterans Day Assembly last Friday. The medal honors those who put service before self. Last July, Trotter saved his five-year-old neighbor who was trapped in a basement by floodwater. Trotter plans to join the Air Force after graduation. Several St. Louis companies are planning to install fog machines as a way to prevent smash and grabs. The idea comes from a European strategy to use fog machines to outsmart thieves. The fog machines discourage thieves from stealing by making it difficult for them to see inside the store. Local companies are hopeful that the fog machines will make their businesses less of a target for crime. St. Louis area nonprofits are asking for help from the community to prepare for winter. City Hope St. Louis and the St. Patrick Center are in desperate need of donations to keep their shelters running. The nonprofits are asking the public to donate food and warm clothes. There is an increase of people staying in the shelters, so donations are in high demand. The nonprofits rely on donations to keep people off the streets. There are a lot of nonprofit organizations around St. Louis, but not a lot that work with the deaf community. Deaf Incorporated hosts events for the deaf community and provides interpreters 24 7 for those that need them. Lindawood News' Jaden Riegsecker got to learn more about the organization. Here at Deaf Incorporated, people all over St. Louis can learn about and help support their deaf community. Back in 2008, Deaf Incorporated was founded as a place for the deaf community to have plenty of resources. So the goal at Deaf Inc. is really to provide information and resources and advocacy and training opportunities for the community. The inspiration for founding Deaf Incorporated was when a deaf person's father was denied his right to have an interpreter at the hospital. He woke up from a surgery, tried to communicate with hospital staff and couldn't. And her father was restrained and he kept fingerspelling help just over and over. Some people take on becoming an advocate for the deaf because of their personal experiences. So I'm a third, the third child in my family. Um, my brother is deaf and he had a learning disability. And I remember growing up and watching my brother struggle. Deaf Incorporated offers classes in the building so that more people are able to learn ASL. They also have plenty of events for the deaf community. So really what we're hoping is that they would be able to understand that communication is not just speaking or talking or listening. That really, you know, it's a lot more than that. The staff of Deaf Incorporated are excited to help the community and provide support for the deaf community as well. For Lindenwood News, I'm Jaden Riegsecker. Straight ahead on Lindenwood News. Authorities are investigating a deadly plane crash that happened at a Dallas air show. We'll give you more details on the crash after the break.
You're not gonna get it all right. Just make sure you nail the big stuff. Mama! Like making sure your kids are in the right seat for their age and size. Get it right at NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. All right, let's try this. COVID has been a really long fight and it's been especially tough on kids. It's been a rough transition for all of us. Right now, as a father, I want to give the best tools to protect my kids. So what can we do to get back to that sense of normalcy? Many parents are asking if it is worth it to get their kids vaccinated against COVID. The answer is absolutely yes. My own sons, who are six and eight years old, had their COVID vaccine. It's an added layer of protection to keep kids from getting any type of severe illness or complications from a COVID infection. A lot of parents are also wondering if the vaccines are safe. Yes, it's safe and effective for children. Definitely safer than a COVID infection. Children get a smaller dosage than adults do. So if you have questions or concerns about the vaccine, that's okay. We're here to help. We have the tools we need to protect kids and help them stay healthy and all get through this together. Hey guys, it's me, Isabella Gomez, filling in for Smokey Bear because he's got more to say than just... Only you can prevent wildfires. Like, if you're outside enjoying a barbecue, don't let a hamburger distract you from fire safety. Make sure you aren't dumping your hot coals or ashes onto the ground because that could start a wildfire. So take wildfire prevention seriously and let's save the world one day at a time. Juntos con Smokey Bear, podemos hacerlo. Go to SmokeyBear.com to learn more about wildfire prevention. Students at the Central Visual and Performing Arts High School will return to virtual learning on Monday. Students and staff are set to return to virtual learning after the shooting on October 24th. This will be the first time that students and staff have returned to academics since two people were killed. Students from the Collegiate School of Medicine and Bioscience share the same campus as the CVPA. Those students will return to in-person classes on Monday. Teachers from CVPA are trying to raise money for their students. The high school teachers sold t-shirts at the city foundry to raise money over the weekend. The t-shirts sold for $15 and all of the money goes towards helping students heal through the arts. The teachers say they felt the need to help the students that were still healing from the shooting three weeks ago. Along with the fundraiser, a local church is donating $10,000 to the CVPA school. The Gathering Church is pledging to donate $10,000 in gift cards and supplies to students and workers affected by the shooting. They are also donating to the St. Louis police officers and emergency room personnel and helping students and staff with counseling. The lead pastor of the church says that with all the bad going on in the community, they wanted to be part of the positivity. The city of St. Louis has proposed a bill that would make the streets safer for people to use. St. Louis Alderman Brandon Bosley introduced Board Bill 120 that would bring $40 million to the city from the American Rescue Plan Act. The bill is proposed for safe street initiatives and the money would be used for making St. Louis streets safer for drivers, pedestrians, and cyclists. The bill would devote money to improving roadways and developing traffic studies. An investigation is underway after a deadly plane crash at a Dallas air show. Six people are dead after a World War II era bomber and a fighter plane crashed into each other on Saturday. Investigators are working to determine why the two planes were sharing the same space before the impact. Authorities are still working to identify the victims of the crash, and Dallas Fire Rescue says there are no reports of injuries on the ground. Cold temperatures are here, and it's finally time to take your favorite winter coat out of your closet. I will tell you more after the break. When it comes to making plans, you are the best. Those nine months were also 273 days of planning. What about your daughter's first costume party? It was out of this world. 
And let's not forget those barbecues you plan in detail for your family and your more vegetarian by the day best friends. That surprise party for your parents' golden anniversary? You get the golden planning. The same way you plan each detail for those moments, start planning to protect you and your loved ones from a natural disaster. Sign up for local weather and emergency alerts. Prepare an emergency kit and make a family communications plan. Protecting your family is the best plan you can make. Hey, can you chop the pineapple? Chop the pineapple. Nope, I'm high. How about I wash off the grapes? Yes. Okay. You're already making good decisions when you're high. I want tacos. Will you drive? I'm a little toasty. Nope, I'm high. Let's order in. Don't make an exception when it comes to driving. If you feel different, you drive different. Let's take a look at the national map. Snow is expected on Monday in the middle and in the north of the country. And Texas can expect a lot of rain around the state. High pressure is going from the west to the east and the north to the south. The warm weather will be replaced by the cold air in most of the country. The cold temperatures took some time to arrive, but they are finally here, so don't forget to stay warm to avoid getting sick. There is going to be a lot of wind in the very northeast of the country, but not so much in the rest of the country. Let's take a look at the local map. The temperatures are pretty much the same in the whole area. Currently in St. Charles is 43 degrees and it's 42 degrees in Maryland Heights and in St. Louis. The weather is the same in St. Peter's and O'Fallon where it's 42 degrees in both cities. With temperatures around 40 degrees, it might be a good day to stay in and watch a movie. Now let's take a look at what the next five days are going to look like. Reaching 80 degrees last week, the cold weather is finally here. On Monday with the high of 43 degrees and a low of 24 degrees. The temperatures will start to drop on Tuesday with a low of 32 degrees and a high of 40 degrees. Mornings are starting to get cold on Wednesday with a low of 28 degrees and a high of 36 degrees. So don't forget, forget to wear a warm jacket. Thursday will be a cloudy day with a low of 23 degrees and a high of 39 degrees. Friday is going to be the coldest day of the week with a low of 17 degrees and a high of 30 degrees. It's time to switch your iced coffee for a hot chocolate. That's it for the weather. I'm Ava Lorenz. Back to you. The Environmental Protection Agency will hold a public meeting where St. Charles residents can discuss their problems with the city's drinking water. Last month, the St. Charles mayor announced the city had shut down two of seven water wells due to chemical contamination. This Thursday, the EPA will listen to the public's thoughts on the situation at Memorial Hall. Those who have questions for the EPA can submit them at pubcomment eesenrd at usdoj.gov. Coming up in sports, the Chiefs win again and the Blues are heading over to Denver. I'll have more on that after the break. Let's go see your room. What do you think? We kept it a little spare, so you can decorate it how you like. Dinner! Hello? Excellent. Soccer is fun. Yeah, I saw you guys out there.
If you need to do something to feel okay to drive, you're not okay to drive. Don't drive buzzed. In the world of sports, Kansas City beats the Jacksonville Jaguars on Sunday. The Chiefs have taken control of the AFC. Quarterback Patrick Mahomes leads the pack with four touchdown passes throughout the game. It was the next man up mentality for some of the with some of the players dealing with injuries. The Jaguars were unable to pull through and the Chiefs bested them 27-17. The Blues are looking to keep their winning streak alive as they head to Denver Monday night to take on the defending Stanley Cup champions, the Colorado Avalanche. The Blues are coming off a win against one of the best teams in the league, the Golden Knights. After a record eight-game losing streak, the Blues are on a comeback winning their last two games. Let's hope that the Blues are able to keep that streak alive over in Denver. The puck drops at 8 p.m. The Cardinals are keeping an eye out for some potential new recruits for the next season. Right now, the team is on the market for a new free agent. Some of the people on the radar are Wilden, Wilson Contreras, Brandon Nimmo, and Justin Ver Verlander. Contreras is being considered for catcher after knocking 20-plus homers over the past three seasons. Nimmo is also in the spotlight for being a smart hitter with few strikeouts. Verlander is also being considered after playing with the Astros. That's all for sports. I'm Jaden Riegsecker. Back to you. And finally, a sparkling water company announces a strange new flavor for Thanksgiving. Ourobora announces a green bean casserole seltzer just in time for the holidays. <coughs> the company says the drink has a sweet, earthy, and buttery flavor that tastes just like the real thing. The company has also made a honey pumpkin flavor to end the fall season and a chai cranberry flavor to get ready for Christmas. That's it for this edition of Linwood News. I'm Lucas Bose. And I'm Jessica Spivey. Thanks for joining us.